This video series is a remake of a plot explanation I made for 13 Sentinels back in 2020 with the original Western launch. I'm remaking it now due to the Switch port being released and also because the original had poor audio quality. Please enjoy and be wary of spoilers throughout the entirety of these seven videos. A wakes up next to Morimura's body with no memories. He finds a sheet of paper with numbers on it along with what he thinks is a car key alongside documents revealing her identity and Mayori student ID, which he picked up when they first met, and he flees the scene. With Morimura dead, Shikishima cuts Renya out of their dealings and he talks about the murder with child Chihiro. While talking to her, he realises Chihiro doesn't remember the feelings she had for Izumi, or that he is innocent of killing the four teenagers in the past loop. She argues that her memory is just hazy from being implanted in the child's body, but Renya deduces that she is actually the original Morimura from 2188. She believed the future humans needed a leader, so the original Izumi added her data to the sector. Zero. The current Morimura used this data by mistake when creating a clone, but didn't realise this as the resulting baby couldn't talk. Renya goes on to explain that Chihiro secretly wants the kaiju to destroy the world and start another loop, as it has deviated too far from her plan, using something she said while stopping the automated factories from creating new kaiju as proof. Operation Aegis would have stopped this from happening, which is why she killed Morimura, who was its fiercest advocate. Chihiro tries to kill him for knowing too much, but Renya tells her that her gun won't work on either of them. Instead of avenging Morimura, he proposes is a bet. If the compatibles can fight off the kaiju and survive the real world, Chihiro will trust them to live on without her to lead them. If not, the world will reset as Chihiro intended. She accepts. Yuki delivers a scout unit to A which gives him a message he left himself, telling him that he's from another world and a mistake has left him and others trapped there. He goes to Sakura High to learn more about Morimura and enlists Iori's help. He finds more of the medicine he found in his own person but is interrupted by Megumi pulling a gun on him, telling him he wanted her to do so. Tomi arrives and diffuses the situation at which point Megumi flees. A returns to the scene of Morimura's murder and realises the car key on his person is actually that of his bike, with a map showing a location he has visited several times, as well as more logs from himself, telling him that Iori and Morimura are the same person and that the latter must be stopped. He arrives at Okuno's hideout, where he remembers Okuno's attempt to back up his memory. The next day, A admits to Iori that he lost his memory and learns from Miwako that the numbers on the note he found on Morimura are for a messaging service, both the number for the service and the password for each individual. He talks to Iori again but notices Juro and Megumi walking past. He recognises Juro from Morimura's medical notes and Megumi as the girl who tried to shoot him and follows them. There, Megumi admits Fluffy was the one who told her to shoot him and the cat tells A he wanted to be put back into the fight against the kaiju, but before he can explain more, Keitaro attacks him. Hearing Miura's name reminds A of his friendship with his AI self. Takatoshi and Okuno return to universal control in Sector 3 in an attempt to contact Inaba but are attacked by androids. Okuno uses the manual controls to shift Takatoshi back to safety but is left behind just as his past self was who loops ago. Takatoshi goes to Sakura High in search of anyone who can time travel and finds Natsuno and BJ, the latter of whom warns him that Okuno's condition is critical, Inaba having communicated this information via more anonymous broadcasts. Natsuno gives him a face that BJ found in the Shikishima labs in Sector 1 and he returns to the UFO with BJ. He's able to deactivate the androids but is unable to save Okuno who dies in his arms, but just like Tamao, his body disappears. BJ claims universal control has isolated him. After this, BJ BJ, Natsuno, Yuki and Keitaro go to Sumeru Bridge to finally retrieve Sentinel number 17 so they can access the information saved within. However, because Keitaro has already used Sentinel 19, the authority to use Sentinels has transferred to him, so BJ, who is an older version of him, can no longer command a Sentinel of his own. Thus, he asks Natsuno to take control of Sentinel 17. Unfortunately, changing a Sentinel's pilot deletes all the information stored on it, so BJ needs to download all of that stolen knowledge to himself as soon as Natsuno takes control of it. She agrees and the transfer happens, but BJ falls silent. Unbeknownst to them, the only way BJ could contain all of that data was to delete his own AI. Natsuno's story ends with the three humans realising he has died. Unaware of BJ's death, A returns to Sakura looking for him. Yuki leads him to the old school building and Natsuno, who has BJ's shell with her. Yuki admits that the footage the first unit she gave him showed was fake, but BJ displays a video of him admitting he always knew A was trying to trick him, followed by a recording of 2188's A agreeing to assassinate Morimura. A is shocked by the thought of being a murderer in the present too. Yuki Yuki and A go to the SIU headquarters for answers, but A gets a phone call from the supposedly dead Ida who has taken Iori hostage. A infiltrates the office to find Ida, has backed himself up into an android's body. Ida orders him to fall in line, but A refuses, revealing he has regained his memories, including those of Morimura explaining to him that it will be impossible to loop again. While unconvinced at first, A knows too many of the details for Ida to ignore him for long and becomes despondent, which A uses as an opportunity to destroy him and save Iori. Thus ends his story. Megumi is cornered by 
by Renya and Chihiro at Ayame Park, where they tell her that the nanomachines she injected into them have made the kaiju stronger and that she has been deceived by a criminal from the future. She runs home to confront Fluffy, who insists that he told the truth and is trying to help them by making the right preparations, telling Megumi that she's her last witch. She tries shooting him but Fluffy teleports away. Hearing a sound, she fires and shoots a vision of Sturo. Her horror at this and all her previous actions causes her to hallucinate further and ends in her shooting herself. A surprise, Fluffy apologises to her unconscious form and tells her that he really was trying to help. As mentioned before, he wanted to unlock the full features of the Daimos game system. It's implied that letting the kaiju evolve alongside the sentinels was an unfortunate but necessary side effect. He admits he was unable to fully restore her Juro's memories and leaves due to failing his side of their bargain. Juro Kurabe later wakes her up and tells her of his dreams of fighting a sentinel. As 426 never piloted a sentinel, he was just the one who designed them. This means these are Juro's own and Megumi realises Fluffy really was trying to help them. Juro also remembers that he was fighting for Megumi and that he still loves her. He promises to protect her but Megumi promises that this time she'll fight alongside him. Her story ends with her resolving to do her best with both him and Fluffy. The kaiju attack and the 13 take to the battlefield one by one, starting with Iori and ending with A. Juro reconciles with 46, back in his cuter form, and they bid their farewells as operating a sentinel takes too much manpower to also materialise the latter. Kuta shows Juro the footage of their 2188 self saving a baby Megumi, admitting he came to see the current Megumi as a daughter too. Takatoshi helps Keitaro retrieve his sentinel from the SIU before reading a letter Okuno left him before his death. In it, he explains that he transferred authority over his own sentinel to him. He enters it and reunites with Okuno, who is in a cockpit just like him. However, Okuno reveals that the sentinels were never designed to have cockpits. These are instead the life support pods their real bodies have been cultivated inside their whole lives. The remaining 80% of the nanomachines' functions was to simulate the virtual reality they spent the last 16 years in. If all five sectors are destroyed, not only is the simulation rebooted, their physical bodies will also be broken down and used as material for their next iterations. Renia takes a break from the battle to try and convince an apathetic Chihiro to seek shelter, but she instead forces him to admit that he had feelings for Morimura. He didn't retrieve a child self to stop Operation Aegis, he did it because he was jealous of Morimura's feelings for 46. Chihiro remains on the battlefield until Miwako tries to protect her. Touched by her actions, Chihiro decides to warp all of Sector 4 civilians to Sector 3 and out of harm's way. Once she does so, Takutoshi asks her on behalf of Okuno to finish his analysis of the Sentinel's meta skills on his behalf. She does so and is pleased to hear of his gratitude, as the original Okuno was her biological son. If you've been keeping track so far, this means all of the gameplay elements in the RTS segments have in-universe explanations. Amazing, right? Thanks for making it to the end of this segment. I'll see you in the next. Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing to help the channel grow. But again, thank you for watching and as always, have a great day.